Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So within today's video, let's talk about the two things that Barcelona must do to beat Real Madrid. This is going to be the Clásico that will be taking place on Sunday night. Let's be very well aware that, that this is also a video that was made right after the match between Barcelona and Inter Milan. And this video was also made like about four to five days before the match against Real Madrid. And the reason why I do want to note this out is because many things could change within these next couple of days. But the idea won't. That is the one thing that will not change is the idea. So we're going to go on to point number one on what Xavi Hernandez should do against Real Madrid and that is to start Jules Kunde. This player here he does have to start. It's very unclear though on whether this player is going to be showing up or not which is why I did say in the beginning of the video we do not know what's going to be happening within these next three to four days but Kunde does have to start. We have heard many reports about having good sensations within the training ground. Kunde is okay. Xavi has also said that he sees Kunde Kunde okay so we could see this player start against Real Madrid and his presence is going to be so important and it is because of a variety of reasons right these things that we are going to be discussing does have after effects post effects ripple effects to the rest of this squad like for example we're going to be able to overload the midfield if Kunde were to be there within that back three we're going to be able to distribute especially a high line and that can only be possible if Kunde does start with players like Pique and Eric Garcia now why do I think that this this is important. Why is it so important for us to have a high line and to have Kunde there? That is because if we want to be able to bring the game to Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, we need to be able to live in the opponent's side of the game. We have to be there. We can't be a team that just sits back, create a low block, and invite Real Madrid to attack us. No, we have to create that high line and live in the opponent's box and on their side. Now, of course, there is going to be doubts. Like, for example, many are going to be saying, why would we do a high line when Real Madrid is going to be having Vinicius? and also Mendy on the left flank and that is why I do say if we have Kunde as that right center back he would be the one player that can tap in on two players Mendy and Vinicius there is no other player that would be able to do what Kunde does on that right flank now I know that many are going to be saying Alejandro Valde could act as a right center back something that we have been talking about in the past two games and he has been doing solid but no one does it like Kunde when it comes to him playing on that side and it's going to give Barcelona so many benefits what's another post effect with making that that high line having Kunde on that back three defensive line like what is another one it would be to assemble these players much higher for these players to be positioned higher and to press higher especially because look Real Madrid are going to be having very technical players they have technical players look at Rudiger, Alaba, Militao, Tetuameni all of these players are players that start for Real Madrid and they're very great on the ball we look at the stats here of Real Madrid they are the best when it comes to completed pass sent between the back defenders into open space why do you think they're so good at that that is because they have the players that can place those long balls from the defensive line and all the way to the front line like for example players like Vinicius which is something that they do a lot you look at the other stat here we can see that they are the number one team that does make the most passes under pressure from the opponent they have the experience in this arena they know exactly what it's like to be a player that is pressed but still have a great pass completion rate and Barcelona have to go up to this team and overcome an obstacle like this to press them so well so good that they lose the ball and make them feel uncomfortable this Barcelona team can do exactly that but only if these players are positioned much higher and the only way we could do that is by having that defensive line that does consist of Kunde, Piqué, Eric Garcia and Alejandro Balde so before we go further into this video a quick word from our sponsor so many of us are going to be heading towards the World Cup right the Champions League La Liga there are so many things that we are going to be a approaching within these next couple of months which is the perfect time to introduce Surfshark VPN. Now let me give you guys a brief explanation on what Surfshark VPN is and why this is so important. I want everybody to listen here. So look this is the best service when it comes to protecting your identity. Like let's say for example you're at Starbucks, you're on your laptop, you are surfing the web, you're going through all of these football websites and you search up like stats on a specific game. Somewhere within that Starbucks or maybe somewhere wherever it may be might get your information from you while you're surfing the web the Surfshark VPN would be there to cover for you when it comes to encrypting your internet activity meaning to protect whatever you have going on within your laptop but here's the one feature that is so amazing about Surfshark VPN and why I think that many of you guys are going to love this it is because of this there are many websites out there when it comes to like European football websites that do not allow you to access that specific website for example Eurosport or, or Eurosport I sometimes try to go through that website because I know they have great articles and great stats and all of these things right 
but it does not allow me to go through there. I have to be in Europe, like in the UK, in order for me to access this website. I have to be connected to a UK server. But with the Surfshark VPN being available to you, you can actually use this, use the extension, connect to a UK server from here in the United States, or whether you're from Ghana or Nigeria. And then seconds later, it's going to allow you to access that specific website. That's what's so great about Surfshark VPN. So it's going to make it seem like you're actually in the UK, which is so weird. And here's another thing. If you're on Twitter, right? I know that many of you guys have been going through this. Let's say that you're going to be busy throughout the week. You can't watch specific highlights on a World Cup match or a La Liga match. And sometimes Twitter does show you those specific highlights. Sometimes there are videos on your feed that does say this video is not available in your location. And you're like, what the hell? Like, okay, like you show me this on my feed, but I can't watch it. That makes no sense. But again, Surfshark VPN is going to be there for you as a extension. You again connect to a UK server, like for example, Manchester, and then you immediately access that video through Twitter. It is such a plug. This is like amazing. If you guys do want to sign up for this, there is going to be a link down below and also a QR code that will be available here on the screen. If you do use this, you would be able to get three months for free. So maybe just use it while we're going through this World Cup phase and through this Champions League phase. And then after that, if you do want to continue, you would get a further 83% off on any plans. And even if you're not satisfied after that, you would get a 30 day money back guarantee. And so again, it is the plug. This is amazing. I think that you guys would greatly enjoy it. But now let's go back into the video. So now let's move on towards key point number two. And that is going to be this Frankie De Jong starting in the midfield. I remember looking back at that game where Barcelona did beat Real Madrid within a La Liga match and we won 4-0. It was a phenomenal match. And one of the best players on that night, it did consist of Frankie De Jong. Yes, we saw Fernand Torres have a great game. Yes, we saw Aubameyang score two goals. Yes, we saw Ronald Araujo have a great defensive game. He scored a goal. But Frankie De Jong was the player that added that fluidity within that team. He was always available for all of his teammates. Like always, he was never marked. And every time he did receive the ball, he also never lost the ball. He was extremely reliable. But there is going to be a slight adjustment if Frankie were to start against Real Madrid in this upcoming game. And I'm going to be explaining what that slight adjustment is because with making that slight adjustment, it is going to be having some post effects. And so let's talk about it, right? Because I think that Frankie is going to be sitting much deeper compared to that previous match that we did have where we did win 4-0. On that game where we did win 4-0, we saw Frankie De Jong much higher. He was acting much more as a interior that worked between the lines. But I think that within this game that we are going to be heading towards too, now seeing that we have finished this match between Barcelona and Inter Milan, I think that we're going to be seeing Frankie right next to Busquets and basically be like his partner and also acting as that third center back in case someone like Aro Garcia needs an option to pass it towards too. And so here's the thing. Real Madrid is not a team that likes to press the back line. They don't like doing that. We don't see Benzema. We don't see Vinicius. We don't see any of those players that they have within that front three or front two press the defensive line. They're not like FC Barcelona, but what they are very good at and what they like to do is press within the center. They like to take the ball away from the midfielders. That is what they love to do. And they're really good at that. If we look at the top teams within La Liga that do distribute the most pressures within the midfield third, you can see that Real Madrid is above Almeria, Valencia, Osasuna, Girona, Barcelona, Mallorca, which is really good. And just to give you guys some context, the top four teams within La Liga that do concede the least, right, that do concede the least within La Liga are below Real Madrid when it comes to pressures in the middle third of the pitch. The top four teams that do concede the very least, it is Barcelona, Betis, Athletic Club, and Villarreal. And look how those four teams are below Real Madrid when it comes to this aspect of the game. Now, what does this tell us? It tells us that Real Madrid are really good at and they're very tough within the middle. Like they're really good. And the only player that I think that could deal with the amount of pressure that is going to be happening in the middle of the pitch that is going to be coming from Tetro Ameni, Camavinga, and all of these other players, it is going to be Frankie De Jong. Yes, Pedri can also deal with the pressure, but no one does it like Frankie De Jong. It's like almost impossible for any other player to take away the ball away from Frankie. And what's also going to be so crucial about maintaining Frankie within the middle of the pitch and to have him deeper than usual is to have him close to Busquets because Busquets is someone that likes to release the ball very quick. When he does receive the ball, he releases the ball very, very quick and he's going to have to find that partner and player to pass it towards too. And that one player could be Frankie De Jong to always make himself available. Because let me tell you, Real Madrid, they know exactly how Busquets play. They're going to want to pressure him, force him to make a mistake and Busquets is going to be looking for that quick pass. And again, Frankie has to be there. Now, here's another post effect that could be happening to Barcelona if Frankie 
Mikey does play within this game and is given this role. It's going to allow Pedri to be much higher on the pitch. This is something that we have discussed in the match between Inter Milan and Barcelona, where they did actually lose 1-0, right, in the first game. We saw Frankie not in that game, mainly because of injury, and the one player that had to replace what Frankie De Jong was giving out on the pitch, it was Pedri, meaning that Pedri had to sit much deeper than usual, because this is a player that does deserve to live between the lines, right? Between the midfield line and the defensive line. He needs to be higher up the pitch, but in this game against Inter Milan, where they lost 1-0, Pedri was again deeper, right next to Busquets, and because of that, he was very inefficient, and we lacked that creativity higher up the pitch, and we lacked that one player that could create with Lewandowski. Pedri is someone that can find so many players very high up the pitch and build with Lewandowski, Dembele, and also with Ansu Fati. And we need Pedri right next to Lewandowski against Real Madrid if we want to be able to increase our chances of scoring goals. And the only way that could happen is by having Frank De Jong on the pitch, taking away Gavi, having Frankie sit very deep, have him carry the ball into the final third only for Pedri to receive the ball and give those final last passes towards someone like Ansu Fati or Lewandowski. It is going to be working if this does happen. So that is it, right? Like if we add these two players in the starting 11, it's going to be adding more character to Barcelona, more personality to this team. We would be able to deal with what Real Madrid is going to want to give us. And if we can give out Koundé's threat on that right flank, taking care of Vinicius, if we can have Frankie within the 11 in order for him to maintain the ball, bring in Barcelona more of a dynamic approach, more fluidity, we will be okay. We would come out with the win. But let me know in the comment sections down below, what move do you think Xavi Hernandez should be making against Real Madrid? Do you believe that, for example, Rafinha should be in for Ansu Fati or maybe Ansu Fati for Rafinha? Do you think that Dembele should not be starting and we should be having Ansu Fati on the left wing and Rafinha on the right side? Do you believe that Frankie should start, but not as a midfielder, but as a center back to be with Eero Garcia and with Kunde? And are you also someone that believes that because Frankie is not going to be in the midfield, do you think that Gavi should be starting in this game? Something that did not happen in the previous match where Barcelona did win 4-0. So let me know in the comment sections down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.